Laundry detergent pods revolutionized the household cleaning industry and their cultural relevance was cemented after a bunch of people decided that eating them was a good idea. Their ease of use and satisfying design has made the many households go to detergent, but the reasons for that are not exactly what you'd think. Today's episode is sponsored by True Earth Laundry Strips. Now, I personally have been using True Earth for years now, and we reached out to them when we developed the idea for this video. Look forward to more about them later on. Tide Pods burst onto the laundry scene in 2012 after manufacturer Procter & Gamble did eight years of research, development, and consumer testing. But it wasn't the first time that P&G tried to create a pod alternative to liquid laundry detergent. They actually tried two other times before this to release a pressed powder tablet once in 1960 and once in 2000. Both times the products tanked and were pulled from the market after just a few years. The thing that finally changed the game was releasing pods that had liquid detergent in them instead of powder. Seriously, these things went gangbusters and made $500 million in sales in North America in their first year. So why did this happen? Well, here are a few reasons why people love themselves some Tide Pods and it is not because they apparently taste great we're gonna get into that later. It has to do with two factors, convenience and a massive marketing budget. Tide Pods are the quintessential convenience product. Procter & Gamble invented a problem and then created a product to solve it. Listen to this, their whole pitch was that people were tired of carrying the jug of laundry detergent from the store to their home. They didn't wanna to have to measure out the amount of detergent for every single load and pouring the jugs was kind of a mess. Liquid Tide Pods, eliminated all of these supposed problems and gave consumers a very convenient, easy to use product that they could just pop into their washing machine and go along their merry way. Now, is this a legitimately revolutionary leap in technology? No. Was it enough to sell a boatload of detergent? Yes. Tide also managed to corner 75% of the single-use detergent market in one year, which of course started a war with every other laundry brand racing to release their own liquid pods too. But here's the thing with the pods. They are more convenient than powder, but not so much that people are gonna pay way more money to switch unless they have a little bit of encouragement. And this is where the marketing comes in. Procter & Gamble used a lot of clever marketing tactics to get consumers to switch from liquid or powder detergents to their pods. They poured $150 million into advertising the pods in 2012, and these commercials made it seem like doing your laundry with these cute little pods was the best thing in the world. The first commercial for the pods just so happened to air for the first time during that year's Oscar awards, which came in just as shy of 40 million viewers. The marketing team was also extremely specific about the design of the pods themselves and the packaging. The see-through fishbowl packaging design was specifically so that consumers could see the little pods, which stand out because of their bright colors. Those color choices are also very much on purpose because P&G was following a known marketing strategy where you make your products look like food. Linking products to food apparently gives consumers a positive feeling about the product instead of linking it to a boring chore. Now, along with being colorful, Tide Pods have a bite-sized sort of appeal, right? They're cute and they're squishy and non-threatening. They kind of look like a Pokemon or something. One marketing expert said that they're like, sort of a cross between candy and a chicken nugget. But what I found interesting is how these squishy little pods even work. Researchers have actually said that part of the reason why people like these pods is because of the way that they feel in their hands. Like, if you've ever held one, it's kind of like a fidget spinner or something. All to say, the marketing and research that has gone into making these little pods desirable is very, very impressive. The reason Procter & Gamble had to do all of those years of research was because it wasn't easy to find a film for the pods that would dissolve quickly in hot and cold water. One of the reasons that their single-use powder tablets didn't work was because the film that encapsulated the powder only dissolved in hot water. So this time, Procter & Gamble used water-soluble film manufactured by a company called Monosol. Just one problem though, liquid detergent is typically made of 50% water, which means that the pods were dissolving before they ever made it into the wash. To fix this little hiccup, they reduced the amount of water down to just 10%, but it doesn't even stop there. Tide also wanted to combine three products into one pod, cleanser, fabric softener, and fabric brightener. I didn't even know 
fabric brightener was a thing. The problem was these three solutions didn't work as well when they're combined with each other before they go into the wash. Apparently, the PNG team created 450 different sketches before they settled on a pod that had three separate chambers for each individual product. They're doing all of this research so that people don't have to go like this. However, it is thanks to these proprietary designs that these pods actually work and do a decent job of cleaning your clothes. But whether or not they actually do a better job at cleaning your clothes than regular liquid detergent is still up for debate amongst laundry aficionados who are probably on Reddit somewhere. Some people like these things because the amount of detergent is supposed to be perfectly measured out for every single load. Whereas with liquid, you could accidentally use too much and ruin your clothes, which has literally never happened to me in my entire life of washing clothes, but whatever. Other people will say that this is a point against pods because they're only measured for medium-sized loads that are averagely soiled, which means that they don't cut it for big old loads of heavily soiled clothes. This just doesn't allow for much flexibility, you know? Like what if you were out with the guys just mud wrestling all weekend, getting all dirty with the boys or something, and you need to throw on a load, you gotta like toss what? like five pods in there to get rid of it? Back in the good old days, you just spray each other down with a hose and that was good, but what do I know? <laughs> My country upbringing comes out every now and then in really unflattering ways. <laughs> Now, some people argue that pods are more effective than regular liquid because they're more concentrated, but the difference isn't enough to throw a parade over. Pods are also pretty limited in how they can be used in that they literally have only one use, which is to wash clothes in a machine. Liquid detergent, on the other hand, can be used as a pre-treatment on stains and it saves you from having to buy a whole other product. Which brings us to the next thing on our laundry list of complaints about pods, and that's that they're freaking expensive. They are by far the most expensive laundry detergent option on the shelf. When you look at the cost per load, they can be as much as 50% more expensive than regular liquid detergent. Okay, well, listen, am I being am I being bitter here? Let's break down uh, the numbers here. So, they're, they're not that much better than liquid detergent. They're more wasteful for at least half the loads you do on a weekly basis, and they cost more per load. So, what's the point? Well, the Tide marketing team has found a solution for this as well. They love to go on and on about how how Tide Pods are wonderful for the planet because they save water. Not only does the detergent itself have less water in it, but the packaging also requires less plastic pollution, which we all know is bad. So on the production side, there is some water saved, but once it finds its way into your home, it gets less clear. We would wager to bet that the convenience of the pod has people doing maybe laundry more often or doing smaller loads. This is not something that we can really quantify, of course, but it's important to think about the full life cycle of a product and how it's used rather than just what the company brags about on the production end of things. But did you catch what they did there? They had to lower the water content in order for the plastic seal on the outside to release at the correct time. But then they turned that into an environmental plus. They're like, oh my God, we reduced the water usage by 40%. But Really, it was just what they needed to do to make the product in the first place. But one of the more recent dramas around these things is the use of polyvinyl alcohol, or PVA, in their products. One recent study found that PVA is a microplastic that does not break down in water, making it not biodegradable and leaching into our waterways, harming sea life, the whole nine yards. The study led to a slew of articles covering the subject, which convinced every planet-loving person that PVAs were detrimental and should be avoided at all costs. It was a fairly large thing in the environmental community. But there's just one little thing. That study happened to be funded by Blue Land, a popular eco-friendly laundry detergent brand. This, this is, is such, such a waste. waste. Another interesting tidbit is that Blue Land is one of the very few eco-friendly laundry brands that doesn't use PVAs in their products. Almost all laundry pods and strips do have PVAs in them. So if you put your thinking cap on for just a second, you might deduce that Blue Land has a lot to gain from trashing PVAs and turning that into an eco-villain of which they are the eco-hero. What do you know? Now, I wouldn't say that this is a particularly innovative tactic. We've seen this before where brands try to position
position themselves as the most eco-friendly option by shitting on everybody else on the shelf. It's basically the opposite of greenwashing, but it has the same objective. As of right now, PVA is still on the EPA's list of safe chemicals, and there's no other study that says otherwise except for one funded by Blue Land. But we are by no means saying that Tide Pods specifically are great or bad for the environment. We haven't even talked about the ingredients that actually make up the detergent itself. But what we are saying is that at this point in time, the PVA takedown doesn't really have any legs to stand on. But what I found amazing throughout this whole pod or not to pod debate is that we've missed out on one other option that has been on the market for a little while now, and they happen to be the sponsor of today's video, True Earth. Now, yes, this video is sponsored by True Earth, but we reached out to them for this sponsorship because we felt like they represented a great innovation in the laundry world. I have personally been using True Earth for years now, and multiple members of the Future Proof team have too. True Earth gets around a lot of the issues with laundry pods by using laundry strips instead. Wanna do a half load? Just rip the strip in half. Wanna do a big load? Use two of them. Their strips are also way easier to ship and come in light, recyclable cardboard packaging. And once they get to your house, they're easy to store, making the whole experience of doing your chores just that much easier. And to top it all off, they are a local Canadian company based right here in Vancouver. I just love it when you see a company seeing a product out in the market today that can be improved and then makes a functional and affordable solution for it. True Earth detergent eco strips are free of added dyes, chlorine bleach, and they're hypoallergenic. And now you don't even have to remember to buy more because they have a subscription plan that works with your schedule. You can set up a monthly, bi-monthly, or quarterly subscription to always have your laundry detergent eco strips delivered right to your doorstep. So if you are looking for an innovative new way of doing your laundry, consider True Earth as an option. However, whether or not your laundry comes in strips, pods, or liquids, there's one thing that we can all agree on. You shouldn't be eating them. If you don't know what I'm talking about, there was a few years ago where teenagers were challenging each other to eat Tide Pods. There's so many uh, questions to get into here. Um, but, but mostly, uh, why? The internet was basically set on fire when this trend surfaced. The Tide Pod Challenge. It's called the Tide Pod Challenge. Don't eat laundry detergent pods. It turns out that the whole gag was mostly just, you know, a gag. More teenagers were posting memes about eating Tide Pods than teenagers were actually eating them. But some teens really did take the Tide Pod Challenge seriously. The American Association of Poison Control Centers said that in the first three weeks of 2018, they had 80 six reports of intentional exposure to laundry detergent pods. While those teens may have been doing it on purpose, there's always been a problem with younger kids who don't know any better eating Tide Pods because they look like fun candy meets chicken nugget snacks. I don't think we need to explain all the reasons why that's bad, but Tide has attempted to address the issue with product warning labels and child safety lids. A baby has gotten to a box of Tide Pods and has opened the lid. So to protect the baby and prevent it from eating a pod, the box deploys a 30,000 volt taser. I just love the fact that they spent 150 whatever million dollars designing a detergent pod that looks like candy and chicken nuggets and then kids eat them and get sick and their solution is let's print a label on that pod box in languages that babies don't understand saying to not eat them. But poisoning children aside, lying about your environmental impact, creating a product that was essentially useless to begin with. I mean, that's all, we can all brush that aside, you know, because Procter & Gamble's a terrible company. Like even if you needed to buy pods, like say you're, you're hook, line and sinker, you're like, I'm buying pods, there's nothing else I can do, even though True Earth is clearly the better product. You wanna go out there? Just don't buy the ones from Procter & Gamble. They are like one of the most legendary bad companies for a bunch of reasons that we don't have time to get into here. They're a mega corporation. So if you are going to, you know, get away from that big old jug, you know our preference, but there are a lot of other options out there who don't support mega billionaires destroying the planet and everybody who lives on it. But thank you so much for watching. Don't eat Tide Pods. And if you like this video, we'll see you in the next one.